What's up, good people? Thank you for joining me yet again. I'm Pastor Jacob. This is the Wholehearted Christian. This is Witness Wednesday, and this is another biblical first responder video. Um, do everything. I need you to do all the things that help my channel grow. I need you to like. I need you to share. I need you to comment. I need you to subscribe to my channel so we can get Witness Wednesday pushing. We need it to go. I want it to blow up. So, as many of you may know by now, over the Thanksgiving holiday, I believe, Kanye West released a prayer. Y'all know my feelings on Kanye West as a Christian gospel artist, musician, whatever you want to call it. So, I think it would be cool for me to react to this prayer in real time. So, I got the audio. I'm going to play it. And you're going to see my face as we listen to it together. And let's check it out. Boom, boom. West side. Kanye West. Conway West side. Okay, so right off that, the bat, it doesn't the, sound uh, like a prayer to me, but it's Kanye West. Hello, my name is Jay, and this is my super, 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 super long Thanksgiving prayer. On this Thanksgiving, I'm so thankful for family, my blood family, my fans, and our haters. We love you too. On Thanksgiving, on Christmas morning, not the night before or the day, just the morning. Okay, wait, wait. Did he just say we're not thankful for nothing but Christmas morning? Okay, it's Kanye West. We're thankful for our current civilization of 8 billion people, our ancestors, and our children. I'm writing this prayer on my way back from taking my mini-me to his first football game. Saint got to play catch with Tom Brady before the game. This is a God's dream. Hold on. Wait. Wait, 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 wait. Okay. So, wait. Did he just say his son being able to play catch with Tom Brady is a God's dream? What God, Kanye? There is no other God. Scripture says that beside him, there is no other. So then what God would be dreaming of playing catch with Tom Brady? I mean, hey, y'all might say I'm picking or I'm nitpicking or whatever, but this is supposed to be, if it's supposed to be taken serious at all, this is supposed to be a prayer offered to God. So in what prayer would you offer God that talks about some other guy's dream to play catch with Tom Brady. I'm just saying, I'm just saying, don't shoot me. My mini me is a mix of two of my favorite things, me and my wife's face. Oh, that's cute. All I think about every day is how I get my family back together and how I heal the pain that I've caused. I take accountability for my actions. New word alert, misactions. The one thing that all my successes and failures have in common is me. Let's start with A, alcohol. I would drink to take the stress away, to knock the edge off. Drinking affected my health and the health of people around around me. Okay, all right. Um, a little sin confession here. Okay, so that's good. That's good. Because I already had a hair trigger temper, and this just heightened it. B, episodes. I went into a manic episode in 2016 and I was placed under heavy medication. Since then, I went on and off the medication, which left me susceptible to other episodes, which my wife and family and fans have had to endure. Ego. My ego has a tendency to go past the threshold of being motivating and entertaining to just being overbearing. There are ways to show confidence without arrogance okay so now now this part i can appreciate now one thing that kanye has a lot of is ego um one thing most men can say that they have a lot of is ego pride we know that the bible talks a lot about pride it says that pride comes before great fall so I do like that Kanye brought this out. Maybe it'll make some men, especially, uh, think about 
having too much pride, having too big of an ego. Um, that is actually something that God has been working on me with, my ego, my pride. And he has been using some crazy little ways to break down my pride and to give me more humility. But I'm thankful for it every day. So I I'm cool with this part. Temper. Now, I know none of y'all would ever picture this, but sometimes I scream. <laughs> and that screaming okay, might have okay, helped stop me. Stop right here. Stop right here. Right here. Now, he's talking about his temper. I can relate. Uh, y'all probably think, nah, but yeah, I can sometimes have a temper. And so I can relate to that. Um... This is one verse that I use to keep me in check. It says that the anger of man does not produce the righteousness of God. Something like that. But yeah, okay, I'm 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 with this. Tell off everyone who doubted me in music, but that screaming did not help me keep my family together. Religion. Self-righteous Christian behavior. When I got saved, it did not immediately make me a better person. It made me a self-righteous Christian. Mix that with being rich, famous, and very, 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 very attractive. And you got a Molotov cocktail ready to be thrown through the window of anyone who ever disagreed with me. I was arrogant with my Jesus. Like I had just got me some Jesus at the Gucci store with a stimulus check. What? Wait, wait, what? What did he just say? I don't know if we should expect more from Kanye at this point. I don't know. But um, what are you talking about? Now, if you're saying that this is a song, if this is just some music, then, okay, I can judge less critically. But if this is supposed to be a prayer, you're calling it a prayer, then what are you talking about, Kanye? What are you talking about? What? Okay, okay. Let's go with politics here. Good Lord, my wife did not like me wearing the red hat. Being a good wife, she just wanted to protect me and our family. I made me and our family a target by not aligning with Hollywood's political stance, and that was hard for our marriage. Then I ran for president without proper preparation and no allies on either side. I embarrassed my wife in the way that I presented information about our family during the one and thank God only press conference. All my dad had to say afterwards was, write your speech next time, son. F no. is for finance. Somebody told me. I spent money like crazy. I mean, it's the craziest thing I've done and I've done a lot of crazy things. As the priest of my home, I must watch my own money and secure our finances. This is America, so people don't consider stealing to be stealing. They just chalk it up to greed, consumerism, and capitalism. I've let people use me. I've had giant entourages, people around me just to make me feel good about myself. I've okay, okay. So, so he's uh, given us a few valuable lessons here. Um, he talks about having people around him that made him feel good about himself. Uh, the Bible has a scripture that talks about bad company corrupting good morals, meaning that uh, simply you need good people around you. You need honest people around you. You need trustworthy people around you. You don't need yes men. You don't need people that's going to push you in ways that don't make you better, that don't make you grow. If they don't challenge you to be more mature, to be more like Christ, then those aren't good friends at all. I had to learn that I had to take accountability. We always judge and tell other people what they should do, but we can only take accountability for ourselves and our children. This Thanksgiving, I'm thankful for the family that my wife has given me. I'm thankful for the life that God has given me. 
and I'm thankful for your time, attention, and patience. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, so overall, I don't think it was bad. Um, I don't want to be overly critical of this thing. At the same time, if I'm being honest, and y'all know me to be honest, I'm going to tell you the truth. I don't take it seriously as a serious prayer. I don't take it seriously as a prayer that you can offer to God. Um, if he wants to call it a prayer, that's his prerogative. I don't think it contains the reverence that a prayer should contain. I don't think it contains the humility that a prayer should contain. Um, but as far as the content, I think, I think as much as I can judge, I don't know, but I think he was being sincere. I think he sincerely wants his family back. I think this was more a plea for attention from his wife, for his family, than him actually praying to God, I think this was more, you know, and, and I'm saying that from a genuine space, not, not saying that he's just doing something for attention, but I think he's doing what he feels like he needs to do to try to win his family back, win his wife back. And, but do I think that this is necessarily something that, uh, it's offered up to God? I don't think so, but uh, let God be the judge of that. But um, I just don't think the, I think the sincerity is there. I think the honesty is there. But it was uh, really prideful because at one point he's saying how handsome he is or how good looking he is and whatever, and you know, you know, it's Kanye joking and just, you know, being funny, but this is a prayer. According to you, this is a prayer. This is something you offer to God. So then if there's any time that you're going to be uh, humble and you're going to be soft spoken and, and, and introspective, this would be those times. Now, I would compare it to a prayer like DMX would pray on, on his album. Now, mind you, I don't necessarily think his prayers ought to be offered to God, but I think you hear the sincerity, the hum humility, the tone of DMX's prayers were more reverential than, say, Kanye West. So um, maybe I'll do a video on that one day. Maybe that'd be cool. Like, y'all let me know in the comments if y'all want to see me uh, do a critique of DMX's prayers. Because I think that would be cool. So um, let me know. I uh, pray y'all enjoyed this video. Um, hope y'all had a wonderful Witness Wednesday. God bless you.